Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and I'm back today to try something completely different. As you can see, I've got a large canvas. Um, I don't normally paint on large canvases just because they're so expensive to get here, but I found this really um, unpleasant <laughs> painting that somebody had done in the charity shop and I thought, actually, I can use that canvas and paint something on it myself. So I'm hoping the canvas isn't jinxed and only creates ugly paintings, but time will tell on that. So because it's much larger today, I've had to lift my camera up. It's way, way up there. So at the moment I've got my neck back and I'm chatting at the camera, but um, when I'm painting, it may be that I'm gonna be looking at the canvas and talking down. So if it gets really quiet, I apologize for that. Um, I probably not chat much anyway, because I've got lots of puddles to do. So over that time, I may just speed up the process anyway, because you don't need to watch me putting lots of puddles of paint on a canvas, do you? So I have got today, some blues let's see what I've got I've got my regular titanium white then I've got this one which is an apple barrel paint this is called cloudless very nice then I've got a sergeant art turquoise it's the first time I'm using this one today then I've got my regular cobalt blue and ultramarine blue and just for a bit of a uh, metallic I've got um, just a metallic silver. It's kind of dark, so we'll see what happens. As you can see, I've mixed all of these up in larger quantities and put them in my squeezy bottles today. And these are paint with around, well, it's hard to say, 30 to 50% Floetrol. I kind of just pour it in sometimes, especially in the larger volumes. And then I've used water as necessary to thin the paint down. And none of these have got any kind of silicon additives the methacone, nothing at all in them today. They're just paint, Floetrol and water. So I thought I would see what happens. So I did a little bit of reading about paint densities. Oh, and now I've forgotten. Is it the Raleigh Lambert effect? Raleigh somebody, I can't remember. Reading up about paint densities and how the cells are created when the paint of different densities is accelerated over each other which means, you know, very much so when you do a swipe, you swipe one paint and you accelerate it over the other, another. Or when you do a flip cup, you basically mix the paints and blop, out they go, and they again accelerate over the top of each other to create the cells. So this time with the puddle painting, I'm not really expecting to make cells. I'm not really bothered about it. But what is gonna interest me is, you may have seen Melly D's, um, channel on YouTube. She does much larger paintings all the time and she only tends to use the water to water down um, with just like a spot of pouring medium and then she accelerates the paint really fast as she tips it and creates cells and I'm thinking okay so that's going back to this rally effect where the paint's accelerating across each other across the canvas as she tips it really fast which is creating the cells. However, my table is not very large in comparison to my canvas and I'm concerned that if I get too, um, too excitable with the canvas that paint's going to go all over the floor and all over the room and all over me. But we will see. Anyway, that's enough ado. I'm just going to start now creating some puddles of paint on this canvas. So I'll shut up, I'll make some puddles and then I'll see you back here in a minute for some pouring. Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and I'm back today to try something completely different. As you can see, I've got a large canvas. Um, I don't normally paint on large canvases just because they're so expensive to get here, but I found this really um, unpleasant <laughs> painting that somebody had done in the charity shop and I thought, actually, I can use that canvas and paint something on it myself. So I'm hoping the canvas isn't jinxed and only creates ugly paintings, but time will tell on that. So because it's much larger today, I've had to lift my camera up. It's way, way up there. So at the moment I've got my neck back and I'm chatting at the camera, but um, when I'm painting, it may be that I'm gonna be looking at the canvas and talking down. So if it gets really quiet, I apologize for that. Um, I probably not chat much anyway, because I've got lots of puddles to do. So over that time, I may just speed up the process anyway, because you don't need to watch me putting lots of puddles of paint on a canvas, do you? So I have got today, some blues. Let's see what I've got. I've got my regular titanium white. Then I've got this one, which is an apple barrel paint. This is called cloudless, very nice. Then I've got a Sergeant Art turquoise. It's the first time I'm using this one today. 
Then I've got my regular cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. And just for a bit of a uh, metallic, I've got um, just a metallic silver. It's kind of dark, so we'll see what happens. As you can see, I've mixed all of these up in larger quantities and put them in my squeezy bottles today. And these are paint with around, well, it's hard to say, 30 to 50% Floetrol. I kind of just pour it in sometimes, especially in the larger volumes. And then I've used water as necessary to thin the paint down. And none of these have got any kind of silicon, additives, dimethicone, nothing at all in them today. They're just paint, Floetrol and water. So I thought I would see what happens. So I did a little bit of reading about paint densities. Oh, and now I've forgotten. Is it the Raleigh Lambert effect? Raleigh somebody, I can't remember. Reading up about paint densities and how the cells are created when the paint of different densities is accelerated over each other. Which means, you know, very much so when you do a swipe, you swipe one paint and you accelerate it over the other, another. Or when you do a flip cup, you basically mix the paints and blop out they go and they again accelerate over the top of each other to create the cells. So this time with the puddle painting, I'm not really expecting to make cells, I'm not really bothered about it, but what is going to interest me is you may have seen Melly D's um, channel on YouTube. She does much larger paintings all the time and she only tends to use the water to water down um, with just like a spot of pouring medium and then she accelerates the paint really fast as she tips it and creates cells and I'm thinking okay so that's going back to this rally effect where the paint's accelerating across each other across the canvas as she tips it really fast which is creating the cells. I think that the canvas is kind of dipping into the middle a little bit so I know I've got a lot of weight of paint on there. I've also cleared my entire table and I'm kind of nervous in case things go everywhere but I'm going to try and pour it um, and tilt it fairly quickly with this whole paint acceleration thing going on. I can also already see that, you know, where I've got paints of slightly different densities, this blue, especially the dark blue, was um, thick. It thickened up a lot, so it's bleeding into some of these other colors, which is interesting. So I am going to try and tip and keep as much as I can on the table. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go fairly fast. Oh, I don't think I've got anywhere near enough paint or at least not like Melly does. Let's see. Whoa. Oh, I can already tell it's gone all over the floor. <laughs> oh my God. This is gonna take me such a long time to clean up. Never mind. It's working. Let's see, how are we doing? Yeah, I think in order to get the whole uh, paint acceleration and so much paint um, moving around really quickly like uh, like Melly does on her canvases she must have more paint for sure because this is yeah I'm having I've got really good cells now it's really interesting and I love the look but I've not got enough of the canvas covered so I'm gonna have to tilt it which is a shame because it looks good as it is but hey hey we will learn as we go along let's see and get this last bit covered I'm gonna have to stretch it out a bit more than I would like. Oh God, I've got paint everywhere. <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is a lot of fun. So it's gonna be a bit more jaggedy than I was hoping. And I've probably layered my paint too many times. Let's see, what can I do? Can I pour, bring some of this up here? Oh, I've got loads of paint here. Oh, I'm just gonna get my hands in it. <laughs> oh my god, this is fun. There we go. Go on, paint. Move over to that last little section. Desperately pouring it off this last corner. <laughs> oh my god. Well, at least I know now that I need more paint. But um, it certainly works. These paints have got no additives in them. There we go. They're coming off the end. It's good. Um, but as soon as I started accelerating the paints, like, uh, like it said, you know, where the paints accelerate over each other. Yeah, we're good. Then, um, you know, they mix and it definitely... <laughs> oh my God, that's so much fun. I need to go and wash up um, so I don't drip my gloopy hands all over everywhere and then I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. 
Wow, that was a lot of fun. Um, the painting is not that awesome. I think um, I had too many layers. My paint was probably a bit thick and I had obviously nowhere near as no enough to cover the canvas in one big kind of fast tilt like, uh, like Melly does. But um, it's interesting. I didn't expect quite so much activity because I don't normally get a lot of activity in my paints without you know trying really hard. But um, it's fun, it's good. So I got little bits of stuff coming through, but I don't think I'll have as much as she does where she leaves hers to develop because like I say, I think my paint was a bit thick. Some of them were definitely thicker than others. I've mixed them all last night and then painted this morning. Of course, they go down a bit thick over time. But this bit here with the silver, that was really quite nice actually. And this bit here with the silver. So I think I'm going to leave it for a little while, see if I like it. Um, see what more comes through and then I'll bring the camera down a bit later and show you the details of this. <laughs> I certainly recommend it. I'm going to have to go and clean up. I can see that I've got some paint on the cat. <laughs> so I better go and sort that out first. I think the cat first and then the problems with the floor. But at the moment I'm walking it all around into the bathroom and everywhere too. So yes, I should have put a cloth set on the floor. That's a lesson learned for next time. So, get yourself a big canvas, throw loads of paint around, have lots of fun, and I'll see you back here in a minute. It was about 20 minutes later, and uh, I have to say for the last 20 minutes, I have barely stopped laughing. I can't remember the last time I had so much fun, even cleaning the cat. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I had to clean the cat a little bit. He only had one blob on him, but he will sit right under the table when I'm pouring. Of course, I poured the paint off and he got a blob on his fur. Poor thing, and I, I didn't want him to lick it, obviously, so that was a painting emergency. He didn't seem to be bothered. He was just sat there with a big blob of blue paint on him. <laughs> okay, I feel bad now, because I love my cat. Don't think I'm cruel to animals, that's not true. Anyway, here's the painting. It's about 20 minutes later. Um, a few little cells and things have popped through in some of the areas over here. And this um, very light, actually, if you see how very, very different it is, the most of the colors, because I moved it around, you know, they it's very, very busy. It created all these cells and then I moved it around a lot and it's gone really, really ziggy zaggy. But the, the very light color, the apple barrel one, is, um, is not. So I'm guessing that that one didn't create so many cells initially and therefore when I moved it, it doesn't look as busy. These um, light patches here, over here and here and uh, here for example, they're um, a nice contrast actually. But I really do like it. Um, I'm not sure whether to keep it or not. It's very, very busy, very zigzaggy. You know, if you look here, you can see exactly what I did. I, you know, the paint's just come backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. <laughs> God, what a mess. Anyway, I did have a lot of fun um, and I, I learned a lot from the process that you can definitely make cells. I also went back and looked up to see um, who Mr. Raleigh's partner was and it was not Raleigh and Lambert, it's uh, the Raleigh rally tailor instability so if you want to look up more about that it is very interesting about the how the different paint densities react together to create cells so there we are. I, I think it's um you know it's got some really interesting things i learned a lot from it but whether i'll keep it or not i'm not sure because i've only got two of these large canvases and if i Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. It was so much fun that I just want to pour, I just want to mix up loads more paint and do it again now in different colours. Um, so I'm not sure whether to hose this one off or whether not to. Anyway, thank you very much for um, following along with me today. This is the most ha fun I've had in such a long time and I'm glad you were here to share it with me. <laughs> right, I'll see you again soon for our next painting adventure. Thanks for following. So if you've hung around this long, you might be interested to see what I've done with the painting. I was kind of mucking around with it, thinking, well, you know, I'm not a big fan, so if I mess it up, nothing is lost. And I got a few tools out and started messing around and created some interesting effects. So I created in these areas where it's very, very um, ziggy zaggy, for example, I kind of used um, my pointy tool here and just created like spirals. So now it doesn't look so ziggy zaggy, it looks a bit more spirally. And then um, I used the palette knife in these areas. There's the camera pointing, there we go, to create like larger, kind of softer spirals. So those are not so ziggy zaggy and everything now. And then where 
um, there were some lighter and darker colours contrasting. I used the point of the tool and kind of dragged one colour into another. So like you can see over here where I've done a spiral and then I've dragged a darker colour out into the lighter colour and then that kind of thing. And then I've got another area here where again I had a bunch of lighter colours so I've just dragged the darker out into the lighter. So now it doesn't look as ziggy zaggy. Um, obviously it's still very very busy and I've made it even more busy but I actually really like it better now now that I've had a chance to kind of muck around with it and make it really different you see these areas you know they're really quite pretty I think so now it looks intentionally busy do you know what I mean whereas before it just looked busy and messy now I think it looks as though maybe I've worked on it and it looks like a busy work of art so I don't know I really like it so before where I was kind of not so sure, you know, nothing can be lost if I mess up here by fiddling with it. Now I think I've fiddled with it. I'm much more happier with the result. You see over in this corner, I've created the spirals again. Oh, it's a bit dark. You may not be able to see, but they're much more subtle. I've done them more subtly there and broken up the zigzag areas and made them more just, it looks more like water now, I think. So now I've gone from not being sure to kind of really liking it again. See, you just never know sometimes. You kind of like something, then you don't like something, and you mess with it, then you like something. But anyway, I fully give you permission, if there's a painting that you don't like, get in there with some tools and kind of start dragging the paint around and making some, um, some impressions or marks or patterns in your paint. And you might be pleasantly surprised. It's also another learning experiment, you know? You get to practice new things, you get to see how paints react, you use different tools. So get in there and have some fun. See you again for the next one. More fun, I hope.